made a mistake in last week's video, by the way. So last week I did a GeoGuessr video, which actually you guys really liked. And it was me in the UK. However, the thumbnail showed the world, which is going to confuse people tomorrow, or Wednesday, shall I say. When that video comes out again, but it is the correct video tomorrow uh, on Wednesday. It's Monday today, why do I keep thinking tomorrow's Wednesday? Um, but yeah, when that video does come out tomorrow, Wednesday, when that video comes out Wednesday, it's going to have the same thumbnail as last week because I've gone back and changed last Wednesday's thumbnail into the UK one that I'd, I wanted. I'm hoping that doesn't fuck it up too much, but it is what it is. I've got some Pepsi. I haven't got my headphones on, that's why I'm feeling a bit weird. There we go. Much appreciated. Right. So, um, today's video is going to be about what I've watched recently, what I've been really like into, what I've been into watching. And truthfully, I haven't been watching too much or doing too much. I feel like I watched a hell of a lot while I was off ill. Ill operation, you know what I mean? While I was off work. However... On reflection, I can't really think of what I watched. I can't think that I watched anything specific that you guys, again, would have liked, whatever. That isn't what, that isn't correctly on the list that I've got, and it just seems a bit boring, a bit of a basic list, really, but I suppose I did watch quite a bit. Now, I've got it segregated into films that I've seen series that I've seen, and then YouTube, some channels I've been watching. I just quickly want to go through my own history. Um, and see if there are any channels that I'd rather, like, you know, shout out and things like that, that I've been really into watching. So, in the couple of minutes that... I was trying to write a few things down. My dinner was done for me. Becky made me an incredible um, beef hot pot, or whatever you like to call it. It's minced beef, a bit, basically a shepherd's pie recipe, but you put like rounded potatoes on top. That's good. This is banging, by the way. Becky's done a fantastic job. With a few Yorkie pots as well. I don't particularly want to get it everywhere, but. This is great. Um, I'm going to do this. So. Um, yeah, what do I want to talk about? So, things that I've been watching. So, films. There isn't really many films I watched. Whilst I was off, I that was a horrible bit of beef. Sorry, I spent a lot of time on. Since I really went on a bit of a YouTube binge of like new people, like properly, and that doesn't mean that everyone I'm going to talk about is like a new watch of mine, and obviously you'll see most of them aren't, but there are a few I want to give a shout out to, but we'll start with the films. So, rewatched all the Harry Potters many a time. Specifically, I got into the habit of watching people's reactions to them. Obviously, already knowing what happens in the films, it's very easy to follow along to people's reactions and their whereabouts they are at like each bit, which makes for very good viewing, to be fair. But 
but yeah, I've watched all Harry Potter again. Again, doesn't really need to be too much said about that. Because Harry Potter's Harry Potter. We all know Harry Potter. It is fantastic. since I'd watched the Hunger Games. I couldn't believe how long it's been out. I remember reading the books when they first came out and then watching the films when they come out. But I think it's been genuinely that long since I'd last watched them. So they're made for good viewing. Surprisingly, I actually didn't watch any of the Avengers films or series. I must say, I've taken a bit of a break on Marvel side of things recently. I'm just not as invested as I was. Maybe Infinity War and games all the times. I'm just not feeling the vibe that Marvel have gone with. But hopefully that improves. I'm excited for the uh, Avengers Doomsday or what Doctor Doom, that whole sort of saga. The what, what they're going to kick off with that. And outside of that, I hadn't watched any films. I'd watched, I think I watched some Lord of One Earth, the first Lord of the Rings film. And I was meant to watch the second and third, but never really got around to it, to be fair. Never ended up watching it. But maybe I will soon. series than I did films. I think with me having a, definitely having a, uh, a World of Warcraft hype, sort of, a couple of weeks, it was a lot easier to watch some series than it was films. So... Actually, I must admit, and I will confess, I never actually finished Suits. I think I got to. Let me take a look here. Season 7. So having a look at it, I think I might actually be on the last season and not have realised it. So I might have to quickly, like, over the next week or two, finish that. I thought there were, like, 12 seasons. Like, so, to cut a long story short, I started the season when Mike wasn't there. 
which is season 8. And I must be around season 8-ish, but I remember a lot of the... A lot of the goings on between some of the episodes in there. So yeah, I'm, I must be mid-season 8, start of season 9-ish, sort of, esque. So, we'll definitely be trying to finish that. My main sort of whole watch in ex my, my main whole sort of watching experience throughout me being off was definitely, definitely Prison Break. Now, Prison Break is a series that me and Becky started watching when we first started going out. And I'm talking nine years ago. We, well, I sort of realised while I was off that it had genuinely been about nine years since I'd watched it. And I'd forgotten a load of little like, plot points and people and characters and things like that. So I'd watched it again and it was fantastic. Even more so the second time. Mainly because I think I sort of knew what would come in and I sort of knew the main areas of it I was able to see it in a brand new light and sort of notice characters nuances a little bit more which is a fantastic way to watch something and I also think that Already knowing what happens allows you to then start questioning. Like, you know what's coming, so you start to think a little bit more cynically. And maybe go, okay, your brain sort of tells you, okay, what happens if, you know this is going to happen, but what do you think that really should have happened? Now you know what's happened, it's not a reactionary thing, it's a anticipatory thing. Anticipatory thing. Which I think is, a, is quite a good way to look at things. And second viewing. Instead of going, oh, I like that bit, and just reacting to it again. Almost having a... What could have changed sort of mindset. If that makes any sort of sense. Um, another series that I've been really into, and Bella, if you're watching this, it's your fault. Becky's friend, Bella. has gotten me and Becky watching Criminal Minds and truthfully we both watch it together it's been one of the early programs where me and her sit down together and watch it and I actually can't wait to like, carry on now there are like one very easy to watch very easy to watch you really don't need to be paying all that much attention to watch it which is always a good thing in this day and age I feel like with TV nowadays, if you miss a certain point, everything just becomes so complicated and really hard to understand. And everything is very intertwined and all the characters are intertwined. With this, it's very episode by episode. Yes, there are a few things that reappear and come back in characters that you left on sort of cliffhangers for like episodes, but it's usually picked up within the next episode as to what happens and the sort of but both the consequences and the outcome of what happened in the previous episode and it's never ever like catastrophic in, in, in a sense I mean there are a few things like end of season things but definitely nothing that like constitutes towards you know like something that really changed and each episode is just fantastically scripted. Um, that being said, I 
also, I also recently started to rewatch Red Dwarf now. What happens? An episode of Criminal Minds on, and we'll stay up and watch that. Just one episode or two episodes in bed. And that's all well and good. That's all well and good. But she has to fall asleep with the telly on. I, on the other hand, cannot. So you'd think, oh, Becky falls asleep during Criminal Minds. No, it's too interesting for her to fall asleep to. So what happens? We watch an episode. The Lukey boy has to put something on that Becky is no longer interested in so she can fall asleep with the telly on. So Luke can then fall asleep once she's fallen asleep and the telly's off. So, Red Dwarf. I have been a massive fan of Red Dwarf for a number of years throughout my childhood. Well, I was say adolescence. And I've started to rewatch it again for the gazillionth time. That's me done with this, by the way. I'm full up. So I've watched it for the gazillionth. just as funny as ever. I like all the little nuance jokes and the, and the sarcastic comments and just the buffoonery that goes on. I'm a fan, so it makes me laugh. It was one of my favourite things growing up, so it, it's just one of my feel-good shows. I get to go to sleep having a good giggle. Becky will fall asleep. I can happily fall asleep knowing that it's nothing that's too interesting to get into. Like, I, I can happily fall asleep to it if needs be. or confused as to what episode I've missed so that's nice and easy so yeah that's what I've been watching um, fun fact I'm actually going or well, planning on going to my works end of year do as Arnold Rimmer from uh, Red Dwarf which could be kind of cool I hope that some people will get the reference some maybe not if I walk up to people and say I'm a Rimmer they might get the wrong idea uh, and then on to YouTube. Um, as always, my two most viewed channels in terms of what I watch most regularly are quite obviously the Sidemen. Goes without saying, doesn't it? You guys know this. Um, YouTube Sidemen fan. Every week they put out multiple, multiple hours of content, so that was nice and easy to keep up with. And Sorted Food. Now, if you didn't know Sorted Food, they have actually appeared in many a Sidemen video. Now, if you are a fan of Sorted Food that's come from a Sidemen video, fair play. Because they've been in a few sort of cooking challenges and things like that. However, I have actually been a fan of Sorted Food way before the Sidemen sort of ever introduced them to, you know, a bigger audience. They already had a big following, by the way. That's, there's nothing on them. And it was like my mind was blown when I saw them cameo in a few different videos throughout the years. And I was like, wow, it's like my two my two YouTube worlds had absolutely collided. So again, I've just continued binge watching a lot of Sorted Foods content. Like, I've literally just before recording this watched their most recent video, which is Cooking with Every Letter of the Alphabet. They are a cooking channel, sort of food oriented channel. They do challenges. Um, really actually educational content, really good stuff if you're, if you consider yourself a bit of a home cook, like you enjoy cooking and making food, binge watch their stuff, it's so easy to watch their stuff, so, so easy to watch, and bit like they have what is called, well they have two chefs, it used to be James and Ben Ebbers, now it's Cush and Ben Ebbers, James left a while ago, still makes a cameo every now and again when he joins back up with them, but Cush is a member of the team that worked behind the scenes, he was part of their 
uh, chef's teams. They have like a bit of a behind the scenes like cooking. What how would you call it? Like a like a team of chefs that sort of work with the normals. And we'll get onto that. Uh, the th- they have the three normals. What they consider normal. Like we are. We like cooking. We're at home. We aren't chefs. It's as simple. And you can tell. You can you, you can tell. Like I think Kush was Michelin star trained. Michelin trained. I think Ben. Ben Ebers worked under Gordon Ramsay for a while, like young, young. I think he went through like the academy, and it was just fantastic. And they, like, the levels between the chefs and the normals, like the normals have gotten a lot better over the years. There's still levels to it, so it is really fun seeing the different dynamics. They often put a normal up against a chef with different rules. They do this thing called pass it on, where they each get ten minutes in the kitchen. They can't really communicate with each other. There's usually a bit of a brief. And the order is decided by either them or the community. And they either, you know, they get 10 minutes, they have to make a dish. And then they can start something and leave it. And then the next person has to come in and carry on. And sometimes it goes swimmingly and they make really cool food. Sometimes it does not. And someone goes, oh, what's this? I don't even know what this is. Okay, let's just leave it and then cook something else. And it all goes to mess. But yes, um, very, very, very much like the content been binging that for years. Definitely binged a lot of it over the last couple of weeks. Um, in terms of the film reactions and the Harry Potter reactions and actually reactions to a lot of other films, uh, I watched a YouTube channel called Angelina. Very, very, very popular on YouTube in terms of reactionary like film and TV series reactions. So again, I just find her reactions really cool. That's as simple as that. Like really entertaining. Really. In, in fact, like, I've watched a lot of people's Harry Potter reactions, and either, number one, they miss loads of little bits of information, and then don't hold on to it for future films, which is something that irks me, but at the same time, I can completely understand it from a YouTube standpoint. Like, their 100% focus won't be on the film, because they're trying to be entertaining as well. So I get it, I, I completely get it. But sometimes if people miss things, it just, it's just it's one of them irks that you get where you go, oh, you missed it, you're watching it and you still don't get it. Like, simple as that. Um, or everyone will have very similar reactions. Like, people will just sit and cry. Or people will just sit and... Okay, this is... The, I'm going to say less. People won't really get emotionally invested in the films they're watching. They'll just be like, oh, yeah, cool film. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. And you're like... Like this is a this is a either tell the people that you didn't really enjoy it or actually it wasn't as good as people have made it out to be and you crack on. Whereas Angelina, she fully invests herself into everything. She she provides different sort of and actually me watching her content, I she, she had an alternate alternative sort of like viewpoint on many a scene where I thought, oh wow, okay. And she really focused on the cinematography and the way things are shot and the way things are framed. For which me, nothing to do with like media studies or the film, filmography, whatever you want to call it, cinematography. I'd never even thought about things like that. And you think, wow, actually, yeah, thinking about that and someone else pointing that out to me. It's fantastic. So, yeah, definitely a fun invested and definitely a little bit educational in, 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 in some aspect. And then I want to chuck you on to some more ASM artists that I've been watching. These, for me, are all what I'd consider niche, in a sense, like people that you might not always come across. Obviously, one name on this you will have come across because I mentioned them quite a bit. But these are... Oh, sorry, completely forgot before we go into this part. Uh, Life of Tom, Tom Syndicate, if you are a... UK YouTube fan, you will, pardon me, you will have heard of him, seen him, watched him. For me, I used to watch his content a lot when I was a lot younger. Um, I hadn't watched him for years, until maybe a year or two ago, when he announced that he was having a baby. I mean, I think I started watching a couple of months before that, so it was almost like, I don't, don't know, something was maybe written, it was like, oh, and then he's got a baby in. And now, obviously, he's got this massive piece of land in Manchester. And the projects they're undertaking on that are going to be fantastic. But definitely, if you've never really been a Tom Syndicate fan, or you've never really understood the content, just go and watch the the vlogs now. 
absolutely fantastic. Um, anyway, back to the ASMR sort of style of things. These are all, again, what I consider quite niche ASMR channels in the sense that they haven't all got like loads of followers. You know, nothing's like, oh yeah, everyone knows about them. And just people that I find very relaxing and have either a video that I go back and watch all the time or just put out really cool, comp like really cool videos. And the first one is Vettel ASMR. ASMR, or as he says, Weasel. He is from. Oh, I'm gonna punch myself in the throat now. I want to say Norway. He's got to be, yeah, Norway. Oh. Um, incredible accent. Does a load of videos in English. He does a load. I think he does one a day. Um, I absolutely love his his accent, and it just sends me right to sleep. So brilliant, absolutely fantastic. My favourite. There's a couple, and they're all just as good. I like his elegant Norwegian chocolate video where he talks about... I think his accent really helps, and when he says elegant, it's just brilliant. So he talks about these chocolate... Cho I love just people pronouncing words differently. I think just takes something in my brain. Don't know why. It is what it is. Um, another one is ASMR, you sitting comfortably. What a pun, what a pun for a name. We all love a pun, right? Here's some more you sitting comfortably. Now, actually, has just over a thousand subscribers. Wait, what? He has two channels. Oh, my days. Okay, so, revelation for me right now. I was going to put you onto a video titled the USA Presidential Map Drawing Video. It's got seven and a half thousand views. Everyone goes show support to that video, by the way. Fantastic. That keeps absolutely knocking me out. Absolutely knocking me out when I'm going to bed. It's fact the, the video before that, by the way, which is on 11,000 views, it's on more views, is where he sits and draws the USA. I actually prefer the US election video because he talks you through each state, colours it in, um, tells you who won that state, how many seats they gained in total, and just, yeah, talks a little bit about the, the, the politics in America, sort of. But I have just found that he's got a second channel, and he's uploading regular content up to about a year ago. Where he draws maps, I'm going to have to check that out because I love map drawing videos, it's one of my favourite. I'm assuming he lost access to his old account and had to put his videos on a different account. Because he's got a US Maps for Sleep video. It's got to be the same guy. And he's actually got his face in a video, that's weird. He doesn't usually put his face on camera, but there is a few there. I don't know if this is the same guy. Certainly looks like it from the profile photo. Maybe not, actually. Maybe not the same guy. Weird. If that's not the same person, then that's strange. Anyway, um, another one called One Man. Just the number one. Not O-N-E. One. Man. M-A-N. All one thing, by the way. No space either. Um, I don't know where he's from. America. Canada. Maybe. He's an older gentleman with a thick accent, as in, like, there is no doubting that he has an accent. Um, Ray is at Ray the One Man. Um, I don't know where he's from. I'd love to know where he's from. His link, or if you click on the About stuff on YouTube, it says I do ASMR and roleplay fun. It says Canada. He's definitely Canadian. Again, another person with a fantastic accent. Like, imagine the Christopher Walken style accent, where sometimes the words are enunciated too high or too low. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And I absolutely love that. Um, some videos, his favourite me is he making a sandwich. I mean, the sandwich that he makes 
in my opinion, is an absolute horror. But it is absolutely incredible. Anyway, um, obviously, Footy Facts ASMR, that would be the one that's obvious for you guys been binging his content. Um, absolutely sending me to sleep. Absolutely sending me to sleep. Um, his recent one, actually, last night I fell asleep to, was the one where he talks about... Um, foot saddle tactics. By the way, um, that was actually three days ago. Wow, I haven't even watched his most recent ones. But foot saddle tactics for beginners. Fantastic video. I absolutely love that. And it's only on 399 views. So people, please go and check that out. It's fantastic. It's wicked. Um, and last but not least is Nick's ASMR. N I C K S. Um, more specifically, Luxury Hotel Roleplay. It's put out a month ago. It's got 48,000 views. It's absolutely smashing. I mean, he's had a number of videos that have been really, really well performing. He's a friendly blackjack dealer. He's got two of them, actually, and they've done really well. I remember watching the first one. Um, the one that's done is like 300,000 views plus. Um, but the Hotel Roleplay specifically is unbelievable. Unbelievable. That, when it first came out, I wasn't even, like, I think I was sat here and just, just chilling out, not really, like, trying to go to sleep. I saw it, and it's just one of those videos where you go, oh, click that. Your brain just, boom, goes to it, clicked it, and within about three minutes, I was like, this. Falling asleep, so absolutely fantastic. Now, that brings me to the end 